were almost more than 200 games played in the whole of the Nike Summer League. We're down to one last game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Phil Sports Arena for the finals of the 2008 Nike Summer League on Studio 23. The championship in the seniors division will feature the champion from two years ago, the UE Red Warriors against this guy and then the undefeated Ateneo Blue Eagles for one last game on a Sunday live over Studio 23. It is UE and Ateneo disputing the winner take all championship game. For ABS CBN Sports, I'm Boom Gonzalez together with TJ Manoto. TJ, tell us how did Ateneo and UE get here? Well, as we all know, Ateneo had to go through Mapua in that quarterfinal matchup. It wasn't an easy matchup altogether. And then they had to go through La Salle, their arch rivals La Salle. It was a tight game pretty much at the beginning as a uh, big lead actually by La Salle. And then Ateneo caught up and then they held on to keep the win. Chris Chu coming off big off the bench. Exactly. He did not play in their in their game against Mapua. So it was a big, nice, big comeback for him. Uh, getting the limited minutes still coming off the bench, yet giving uh, the productivity that he gave them enough to get past us all and going into the finals for the first time here in the NSL. One of the rare chances that Ateneo makes to the finals in any uh, preseason league. And talking about UE, they had to go through FEU. It was not an easy battle mm -hmm. against FEU. As we all know, a lot of teams have been surprised by FEU already this year. They have matured enough from last year. Their, their core of four rookies, uh, led by Baroka and Kawaling, have really done so much improving this year. But uh, they just fell short against UE as UE won that one by a margin of eight points. And then they had to... Uh, survives and bad also in the quarterfinals. So UE is a tested team coming into this finals. Uh, I'd say uh, even more tested because they came off a finals game mm -hmm. in another league yesterday. So they are a bit tired. We'll see how that will affect them today. But uh, all the marbles are on the floor today, of course, UE wanting to get the title back after losing it last year. Tell us. And now let's meet the starters. First, for the Ateneo de Manila Blue Eagles. At guard, standing 5'11", number 11, Eric Sullivan! At the other guard, standing 5'11", number 17, Chris Chu! At forward, standing 6'2", number 13, Ryan Buenafe! Forward standing 6'3", number 16, Mike Ballos. And at center standing 6'6", six, six, number 19, Rabba al Husseini. And coaches Noel Black, assisted by Jamaica Reyes, Sandy Aresto, Chaga, Gina Bradley, John Asito, and Gabby Severino. And now the starting lineup for the University of the East Red Warriors. At guard, standing 5'9, number 6, James Martinez. At the other guard, standing 5'9, number 18, Marcy Arellano. Forward standing 6 2, number 19, Gino Antone. At the other forward standing 6 3, number 9, Elmo Espiritu. And at center standing 6 4, number 15, Patty Liagas. Warriors are coached by Tito Pumar and assisted by Paul Rivera, Vic Escudero, and Lawrence Yulo. Our official for this game is Jerry Jimenez, Bobby Mendoza, and Ruel. Well, Coach Tito Pumar and Coach Norman Black, finals. 28 teams in the seniors division, DJ. Now down to the last two, the undefeated Ateneo de Manila University, hoping to get this finals in the bag, going into the UAP, which starts in July 5. Well, the UE Red Warriors, well, we have to say, in the last two, maybe even three years, TJ, mm -hmm. let's just put it down to the last two, they have been probably the most consistent team in the offseason. At right. one point, if it wasn't, I think it was last year, they, uh, the year before, they even swept all the preseason right. exactly. um, uh, tournaments. They got all three crowns. And uh, 
also, the, although interesting, that adds up to the, how the critics have said that maybe they burned themselves out too yeah, early, uh -huh. too soon, and they have not much left come playoff time for the UAAP because they still have a hot start in the UAP yeah. in the first round. To come second round and even the playoffs in the final four and hoping to make a run to the finals, that's where they kind of have faltered in the last two years. Well, they made the finals of the UAP last season. Obviously, everybody knows that. Undefeated, and then they lost to the De La Salle Green Archers, too. They haven't won the big one, and that was the reason why Coach Dean Dupomarin was brought into this system, brought into the school. Uh, in the last year of KG Cananeta, I remember. Right. And then after that, they performed very, very well, even in that first year that he, he uh, coached. But... Obviously, they're hoping to get this one and the UAAP, which begins in July 5, 2008. And, uh, we also witnessed, as we see two teams already scoring here in their first possessions, that we just go through the mythical five selection. We won the awards, Rico Meyer Hopper, PJ Barua. Great season for him in the offseason. We expect a lot from PJ Barua this coming season. Tariq Yagas, Mark Barroca, also a lot is expected with him this season and Eric Salamat. Your thoughts on Eric Salamat, DJ? Well, we were talking about it before we got on the, on the air and Eric Salamat really, I think, is the key for Ateneo this year. Uh, last year, he kind of blossomed late in, in the UAP, kind of like latter part of the second round and in, in the final four with those back-to-back uh, -back matches against the Salen. What he brings to the floor for Coach Norman Black is something they have sorely missed with the loss of JC Utah. A guy who can slash, finish, and more importantly, I think, drive and drop yeah, with precision. Situations. With yeah. precision. There are some players who can drive and get lucky with a drop pass out of desperation because someone just made a cut. But I think with the consistency that Salamat has done in the last couple of years, he thinks about what he does. You know, he's, he's very mindful of how he drives and he knows where the players are on the floor. As long as the boys space themselves out well, he can pick his attack. He can pick the part of the floor where he wants to drive and find his uh, open spot to give a good pass. And of course, he is an excellent defensive player too. That too. He's, he plays bigger than his size. Exactly. He can defend an uh, offensive player, I'd say, two inches, even three inches taller than he is. He's only about 5'10", five, 5'11", five, actually. And the intangible about Eric Salamat, aside from the fact that he can bring down the ball, although he turned the ball over in that sequence, uh -huh. is this guy is a fighter. This guy is not scared of anyone. This guy plays with all-out intensity. And he knows what it is to win. I mean, he's a MVP in the juniors division. Exactly. In the meantime, James Martinez, all the five points of UE, to start off, he's looking to add on to that as he gets into the lane. Harry Yagas, who is shooting at a high clip in this season for the UE Red Warriors. Valdos, the breakout player in that USD game, that playoff game in last season's UAB, and since then he has really made the rotation of Coach Norman Black. Although he's an interesting starter today, uh, as uh, normally we see either Salva or even. Uh, no, no, uh, no, 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 exactly. He's celebrating, with he's celebrating a birthday, by the way, wow. today, the native from Bacolod. We'll, we'll talk more about that, or we see Paul Lee on your screens. And speaking of UE, let's usher in a third member of our broadcast team, Ms. Riza Diaz. Riza. Boom, I was at the huddle of the UE Red Warriors earlier, and they were listening very attentively to Coach Dean Dupomaren. They discussed all the game plan that they would have for this game, but it is loud and clear that they would want to paint the Blue Eagles with red, serious UE defense. They recognize they are a smaller team, but they're out here to compete, to challenge, and to conquer. Nevertheless, he ended the huddle by saying, let's enjoy this game, learn a lot from it in preparation for the upcoming UAAP tournament. Boom. Thank you, Riza. You know, that drive of Raba al is something that we would like to see from yeah, him very often. Absolutely, absolutely. Especially the Ateneo diehards who, there are, I know a couple of, out, of them out there who strongly criticize the heart and uh, desire of al on even. the floor. Toughness, exactly. And uh, given that he's that size and his athletic oh, ability for, the, for his height, actually, he can do a lot more. Well, he's coming off a 20.7 rebound performance. Yep. A, a great fourth quarter, especially in that game against their arch rivals, La Salle, to make it to the finals of the Nike Summer League as Ryan Buenafe very much off the mark in that sequence. Seven to six is our score so far in the first four minutes of the championship game of the 2008 Nike Summer League. 
Here is uh, that sequence by John Paul Lee, one of them expected players, one of them uh, uh, playground players from the UE Red Warriors, originally from San Sebastian, giving them the lead, 76. We'll be back. Phil Sports Arena, we are live over Studio 23. Again, Boom Gonzalez, DJ Manotok, the supporters on a Sunday with us. UE Ateneo for the finals of the Nike Summer League. And UE has won every single preseason tournament in the last three years. Or at least they've won it at least once. Right. Every single preseason tournament, except for the big one. And that in itself is motivation for this UE team in this season's Nike Summer League and the UAPS. James Martinez knocks down another long bomb. Actually, a three-pointer. So 10-6 to six is wow, our what score. A hot, what a hot start for James Martinez. Just when you were talking about him earlier in the pregame, how well he did against uh, FEU. This guy plays in spurts. Normally, you, you see his threes raining in from time to time. But now, very offensive-minded James Martinez to start out this contest waxing hot for UE. Hans Tiele in the ball game for the UE Red Warriors. Alusani with the handoff. Chris Tu knocked down a jumper from that area, misses this one. And that's Raba Alusani fighting for the rebound. You know, he's distance 6'6, six, six, but I'd say he's at yeah. least 6'7. He, and he's got the, the long arms. Yep. He's got that Tim Duncan. Uh, stance, <laughs> the stance. Maybe, maybe even facial expression sometimes, <laughs> a lack of emotion. <laughs> Let's bring in the fourth member of our broadcast team for this championship game, Vanna Lim, reporting for Ateneo. Vanna? Boom, the Eagles were given a very long to-do list today, which starts off with breaking the potentially deadly UV press. Up next is playing smart, making sure to avoid those quick release shots that UV tends to hustle them into, and also to avoid off-balance and maximize their size advantage. But speaking of size, you mentioned Nonai Buklao and his birthday today. He's suited up but is unsure to play because of an ankle injury that he suffered just two days ago. And also Jai Reyes is not going to be playing this game because of a lower leg injury. Thank you very much, Van Alim. So the birthday boy might mm. sit out this game. Well, obviously they want to rest right. him already for the, uh, right. for the season, but uh, not to say that they have the height and the heft. And you mm -hmm. mentioned this at the top of the coverage, the rebounding of Atene. A lot is expected from them, especially with this lineup uh, that they have this year. And in that game against Lasalle, they were still out-rebounded 35-33. to 33. Right, they got lucky that they won it even though they lost in the boards. And they were losing badly on the boards, actually, at the first in the first half alone. And to, to average 38 rebounds a game in a 40-minute game with this kind of a lineup, I'd say you should average a little bit more. Probably 42. 42 43 is somewhere around the pace where Ateneo should be with the size and experience that they have. Birthday boy from Baholod on your screens earlier. Somebody who's also under the weather is Marcy Arellano, and he's not, he didn't start the ballgame. It was Gino Etrone who started for the UE Red Warriors. Husseini again. Fighting inside, but came up a little bit short. 13 to 6. For the UE Red Warriors, the champions from two years ago, Paul Lee. Missing, Hans Tiele out rebounding everyone. And this is what you were talking this about. This guy was, was a monster on the boards in their oh, last game. Yeah. He had 11 big rebounds. Even in the last season of the UAP, right. he had a game that he had 17. Right, he is such a monster. And, and I mean, what a lot of people saw him, you know, this big, tall kid, very athletic, yet very skinny. But this year, he's got bumped up a bit. I mean, I wouldn't say he's really buff, but you know, yep. I'd say he added about a good five to eight pounds of lean muscle. Yep. Good enough, and, and I don't think it's uh, too much to slow him down also. That 17 rebound performance was up against LaSalle in one of the games prior to the, to the finals. finals. The one that they almost lost actually okay. on that Rico Meyer Hopper ah, when, when he right. didn't, couldn't see the ball. Yeah, the fast pass. Yes. Yeah. Pass from Jamie. That. That's something Fashion. he's been working on also, his outside shot. He's got a good release. He, I like his form from the outside when he takes that smooth one motion jump shot. And he's just got to work on it, be a little bit more consistent. Chris Chu trying to create some space. It's fouled by Hans Yele. On the attempt, 17 to 8 is the score. 251 remaining in the first quarter of the championship game of the Nike Summer League. Second personal foul already on Hans. 
Yeah, this is what you were talking about, DJ. Off the dribble. Confident yeah. pull up by Hans Tiele to give them a 17 to 8 lead. We'll be back with more of the NSL. Back for more here in the Phil Sports Arena as the UE Red Warriors ahead 17 to 8. In the first seven minutes plus of the first quarter, James Martinez with the hot hand so far with eight points, a couple of triples. And he will be matched up against fifth year veteran for Ateneo, Chris Chu, for today. Different uh, roles for uh, their teams, but uh, well, they're go-to guys already. And consider James Martinez. Well, one thing that both can do is hit big shots in the clutch. Yep. And they've done that the last couple of years for their respective teams. Martinez is from San Beda. Yes, San Beda High School. Nonoy Baclao making the appearance here, nursing the ankle injury, according to Van Alim. Happy birthday to him. As Chris Chu knocks down free throw number one, Eric Salamat from San Sebastian High School, who used to be teammates with Paul Lee. And you see the similarities, not in terms of the game, but in terms of the way they play it. Yeah. You know, that the, the intensity. The intensity and not backing down. And they're both slashers, and I love it when they're matched up against each other, too, as Chris Chu is two out of two from the line. And Ryan Buenafe, the rookie, the much ballyhooed rookie, also from San Sebastian, now coming back in, making his, his re entry here. And speaking of their alma mater, they yep. snatched the junior exactly. title last Friday. FBU in the meantime, our, uh, second runner up today, earlier against the De La Salle Green Archers, last year's NSL champions. And speaking of La Salle, San Sebastian's opponent in the juniors matchup was La Salle Green Hills. Yeah. A rare opportunity for La Salle Green Hills to do very well in the summer leagues and go very far and very deep. Although they were outclassed totally in the, in the finals, game, but were, still. Yeah. But the fact that they made it this far, made it to the finals, says a lot about the new system that coach, new coach Hubert De Los Santos is bringing into the South Green Hills. As uh, for those of you who are not so familiar, they are the juniors counterpart of CSB, CSB in the NCAA Junior. Because they are called the Junior Blazers. 17-10. Now, well, before those free throws, by the way, Chris Chu, they were scoreless, or they only had two points in the three-minute span. And a second personal called on Toto Bandai. Now, you see a lot of the players with that blue tape mm -hmm. on uh, their body. So I'm trying to look at uh, the players on the floor right now. That not, make it not on the floor, but uh, not on the floor right now. Right. But uh, on the bench, you have uh, Chris Chu, you have Eric Salamat with there, there on the screens. Yep. So, uh, DJ, go ahead. <laughs> you, I'm going uh, to try it out. Explain that. Explain that to us. I'm going to try it out. It, it's it, you know, feeling it right now. I asked for a small piece from the Pineo bench. It's, you know what's interesting? It's flexible. It's not like the usual old uh, athletic tape that, that has the same uh, yeah. material, but it's not flexible. This is flexible. Like, it's like it's Carter, actually. So, it's, it's good to put on joints, I guess, I'm imagining. And, and I'm sure it has the same kind of therapeutic uh, ointment on it. To give you that deep uh, warmth, to keep that joint, whatever's aching, warm. So I'm gonna try out that warmth. Just in case you think uh, that's uh, only for fast that No, 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 uh, I don't. No, that's why we're explaining I mean, to we, everybody. Right, right. I mean, I think the formula. Correct, but it, I mean, last year we, we saw yeah. some who were pink. Yep. There were some wild colors before. Buena fe, setting up Salva, inviting wow. the contact. Foul is called. This kid has no fear. We were talking about Eric Salamat early in, in the free game before we got on air. And I think Nico Salva, depending on the minutes he's going to get this season in the UAP, is also going to be a key factor in terms of bringing that slashing game back to Taneo, specifically from a small forward position, something that they've sorely missing out when JC and Tal left. I mean, uh, you know, I, it may not be fair to compare him right now. Of course, yes. he's a rookie, but, but he, he kind of moves like JC and Tal. It may not have the same kind of elevation. And uh, not the same kind of jump shot as JC that improved in the latter part of the stay with the Tineo, but the way they are fearless in terms of driving to the basket and, and having the ability to, to hang in the air and, and alter his shot if needed. Nico Salva so far has been bringing that to Ateneo, averaging nine points a ball game. That's right. A foul is called on Ryan Buena, trying to steal the ball from behind. 
you know, usually if you, if you do that, they will call the foul. That's such a bad habit of yes, uh, exactly. defenders. Should just I mean, sometimes you get away with yeah. it, but... And I hate it when I get stolen from behind and I play the ball. <laughs> I, I was talking to a lot of uh, coaches about, you know, defense and all that and how I would love to see really kids, whether juniors or the college uh, division already, you know, really develop great defensive habits more with their feet exactly. rather than their hands. That's why, you know, you talk about uh, a lot of the players, let's say, in the U.S., they are trained to really take offensive fouls yep. and how to beat Make offensive sure you get players to the spot, to the spot yep. more than, you know, just slapping using and, and, and using your hands. It's really a bad habit as we look at Coach Norman Black, who is behind, his team is behind by nine, with a minute and eight remaining here in the first quarter of the finals of the Nike Summer League. So again, just a recap, if you just joined us, Marcy Alignano, a bit under the weather for UE, not yet playing today. And this whole UE team had a big, tough game yesterday against San Beda in the finals of another uh, preseason tournament. And for Ateneo, Jai Reyes is not suited up today, and Nore Baclaud might not play as he is well, also he, he, he's, he's on the floor. Oh, he there he is now. I was he looking at the Yeah, OK. There he, he is. came in early. But he's not 100%, as Banner yes, said. Exactly. Rudy Lingana, in the meantime, six points already. Some hot shooting from UE here in the first quarter, TJ. Oh, yeah, led by James Martinez. Who Kurt started Blum. out very aggressive. Fading away and this foul was Nonoy Paklao on the rebounding scramble. Now, a question here is, you know, what I want, uh, what I want uh, to question here is that it, does Ateneo really want to win this one? I mean, we all know what right. we can do already right, in preseason right. conferences mm -hmm. or preseason tournaments. But we haven't seen Ateneo, right. you know, battle it We've out. Never seen them really go exactly. all out, you know, pre aggressive and preseason. I mean, last year, in fairness to them, they were six and zero, right. and then they had to go to uh, the, the U.S. US training, to train. so skip the quarters altogether. Exactly. But how much do they really want to win this Nike Summer League Championship? Is what we want to see also today. You know, I, Coach Norman Black, he's the kind of a competitor who always come into a game. As he always tell me, ready. We're always ready. He also ask him, Coach, how are you guys? How's the team? We're always ready. And, and always wanting to win, but but that's, that's the question, how much effort did you put into it, especially when it's preparation stages like this. It's a summer league, you're preparing for your main tournament and you want to give a good uh, mix of your voice and playing time and, and your combinations on the floor. I say that as we ooh, go into the last 10 seconds of this quarter because, you know, teams like Yui and uh, well, most specifically LaSalle who have uh -huh. won championships and FEU who have won championships, have really showed that they even want the preseason tournament. Right, right, They've right. shown it. They've, you see it in their faces, the players. Well, I guess to each his own how they exactly. value winning titles in the preseason, or rather than than titles and win-loss records, yeah. some coaches just look at the quality of play. Exactly. And first quarter highlights, and it's been all UE, although, you know, they announced the toe-to-toe -to -toe in the early goings of this quarter, but UE, some hot, Shooting and points, dis uh, point distribution has been superb for them so far in this uh, first quarter. And add to that, the defense that they put on Ateneo, only scoring 13 points so far in this game. Rare incursion inside there for Raba Alasani, but other than that, the big men of UE have controlled the paint and forced Ateneo to take a bunch of outside shots, and they haven't really been clicking yet. We'll come back with the second quarter. That's the trophy that they're fighting for today, Sunday, here at the Phil Sports Arena. Fourth year, by the way. Fourth year that we've been doing the NSL. And now the last game of season 2008. Are the finals between the UE Red Warriors and the undefeated Ateneo Blue Eagles. We are glad to have you with us here live on Studio 23 for ABS-CBN Sports. Lou Gonzalez, DJ Manoto, Van Alim and Riza Diaz reporting for Ateneo and UE, respectively. Strong lineup to start here for Coach Norman Black with Chris Chu, Eric Salamat, Baklao, Alusini, and Macon Austria, the second year player from Ateneo High School on the floor. Now, in the first quarter, we mentioned rebounding, and DJ UE is 8 Ouch. to 3 over Ateneo in, in the first quarter. Well, that also is an indication of how well Bui has shot. You're not True. giving that many opportunities for Ateneo to get defensive rebounds because they shot the lights out with 25 points. Looks 
Jakarta losing it. Mingana recovering. Espiritu stepping back. And Al Husseini coming down with his first rebound of the game. And you also have to remember, Nonoy Baklao was, was not part of that starting lineup. He is the leading rebounder of Atene. A bad pass by Eric Salamat. A couple of uh, careless turnovers so far for Eric Salamat in this game. Earlier in the first quarter, he had a bad pass in the middle of a UE full court press. Yagas, top of the circle, down to Elmer Espiritu. What is your assessment of UE this season? With all of these new players also, all of these rookies and sophomores, losing three big players in Jorel Canizares, Kelvin Gregorio, and Mark Borboran, who practically can play the same right. positions, can score anytime they want. They can be a big or a small, depending on uh, what the occasion What's calls interesting for. that I see from them is still the, the, the confidence, the swagger that UE has, that you know how, how confident they were last year's UAP, considering yeah. it was a heartbreaking loss, yeah. a heartbreaking ending, losing to LaSalle after that uh, unbeaten run in the elimination round. But it's interesting to see amidst oh, that oh, loss, yeah. losing the, those big three players yeah. who are veterans, they still carry that air of confidence that they can win, they can beat anybody on the floor. And so far, they've had that success. The record in this uh, preseason has shown Rafi Reyes against Eric Salaman driving, dishing it out with seven on the shot clock, and Eric Salaman coming away with that rebound. Chris Chu has been playing a lot of minutes here in the first half so far. Chris Chu, nice That's ball it. fake. Beautiful fake there, faking off. Is that a rookie? Tagarda? Tagarda, yes. Tagarda from UE. So a little headway here, four straight points. For Ateneo to start off the second quarter, look at this, he seduced Tagarda into that thing. And then, separation, and no problemo for the fifth year player of Ateneo. We'll be back. Players that they will lose this year, of course, Clayford Arau, sitting alongside JV Casho. Former teammates in San Beda, exactly. you're wondering why last night sitting beside Ateneo. Fordado, of course, the low post option of Ateneo. Now gone with him gone. And, you know, the medium range shooter that he was. And he was also one of the best fast break finishers of Ateneo, right. surprisingly. Right. Always working hard, getting down court, beating the other big men. And it really started when he lost so much weight yeah. in the last season. Raba Luceni just could not finish that one. The lead is back to 10 as we send it over to Riza Diaz. Boom coach Dito Pomarin had a very brief huddle last time. He said, I like what I'm seeing from you guys, but I want to see more ball movement. I want you to rotate the ball and to share it to your teammates. Likewise, he reminded the Warriors to be more conscious in committing those unnecessary fouls. Boom. Thank you very much. Riza Diaz reporting for UE. Another bad pass and a broken play already for the Blue Eagles. And another foul, just as Riza Diaz was <laughs> saying, that Coach Dindo wanted to take care of their fouls and have been uh, at least the ones that were careless, and not necessarily needed. Michael Baldos, who also came from San Beda, right? In high school. Again, we mentioned how he was riding the bench for a very long time for Ateneo, and then just we look at uh, now the assistant coach of De La Salle Green Archers, Chola Villanueva, scouting, obviously, for the UAP. Michael Baldos, that breakout game against UST, when he played like four or five minutes and scored seven or eight points quickly. And then after that, he played extended minutes in the last two Ateneo La Salle games. And since then, has been part of the regular rotation for Coach Norman Black. Of course, that can still change come UAP time. Yep. Just to mention, as I mentioned, the uh, UAP begins July 5. The NCAA, by the way, starts on June 28. All exclusively right. from ABS-CBN Sports and Studio 23. Back on Austria also recovered from a knee injury. It's good to see him running around healthy. He looks like he's moving well without a knee brace. Last year he played with a knee brace. Star of the juniors of Ateneo. Chris Chu, that's tough. And Barillagas was there. And he will have an interesting uh, situation when he plays against Adamson. Playing against his dad. Oh, who's who will be coaching Adamson. Yeah. Just in case you guys are the only yep. coach 
be able to bring Adamson to the final floor. Back now with the Falcons. Bangos with the offensive rebound. Fresh shot clock for Ateneo. And again, this is what you want to see. There you go. You were talking about the drive and dish capability. You know, the, the players who are good at driving and dishing have good peripheral vision. You know, they're not necessarily looking around and moving their head in different directions, but they have a wide angle uh, of, of vision when they're dribbling straight, but they can see what's around them. And really, that's tougher than, than how it looks. Because it's, yes. Sometimes you drive with the intention of ready to dish, right. but there are also sequences where you really decide in the last split second of exactly. that play. Exactly. And there's some guys who just drive head down, head exactly. you know, pull strong. Ari, top of the circle. Raba obviously giving him space. Rafi Reyes inside. Hans Tiele against Michael Baldos. Martinez again from quarter court. That's short this time. This is only a four-point lead as Paco and Austria will go up against Paul Lee and Raba al with three Rebounds and eight points here oh. in the ball game. There you go. The hustle there of Alusani not giving up on that play, even though it was a one against three situation that was uh, facing back in Austria. He came up with that a big offensive rebound. They're only down now by two. It's a 10 to nothing run for Ateneo to start the second quarter. 10 0 run and quelched by Paul Lee from downtown. This is a guy who has been shooting very well for coach Dildo Pomarin. Has had his timely threes also. Inside, Rafi Reyes. Five straight points to answer the 10 0 run. And UE again up by seven with five, 11 to play here in the second quarter. That again is the turnover caused by the UE press and Patty giving it up to Rafi and finishing off that 5 0 run. Finals of the Nike Summer League 2008. More of it when we come back. Back here at the Field Sports Arena, we just saw Joe Nakamakalam earlier. Part of the crowd, the Sunday crowd. And the UE Pep Squad celebrating. The lead was brought down to two at 25-23. Then now back up to 7 and 30 23. Possession going to Ateneo, and that's a foul by Paul Lee as we send it down to Vanna Lim. Ateneo may be behind, but they're still not rushing as Coach Norman instructed the boys to take your time, make good shots, especially at the foul line, and we'll get back in this game slowly. They also noted that UE strength is in their guard, so we need to play good perimeter defense and to close out on all their shooters. Also, in case anybody wants to pick up some of that blue tape you talked about earlier, <laughs> it's called Kinesho tape. Boom. Thank you very much. Ah, Lim. I can't spell that though. But, uh, DJ was the one who uh, coaxed you into uh, <laughs> asking for the... Small piece. It's about a two inch by one inch. For our informational <laughs> and personal purposes too. 30 to 23 is still our score. Diele confidently wow. putting it down. I was about to say, good challenge there by Rabbi if that ball had missed, but then again, an awesome shot by Diele, really showing us his outside shooting and mid range jumpers have been on the ball. Ryan Buenafe, the rookie, has been very quiet here in the first half. Chris Chu looking to make noise. He swings it over to Bakon Ostia. That's off. Chris Chu taking the offensive rebound from two UE Red Warriors. Chris assessing the situation with 18 on the 24. Stingy defense by Rafi. Al Husseini has that shot, but he comes up short. Balboa wow. steps it back. Loose ball. And it is a foul a call foul. to the Red Warrior. Good call by the refs. After Tiene lost any chance of getting that ball, he was still on the back of Al Husseini, So he picks up a foul. So penalty situation for Yui after this next foul. They already have four fouls right now on the fifth. Atene will get free throws. Rabba has four out of nine here in this game so far. Third personal on Hans Tiele as Nono Baklao comes into the ballgame. It's Hans protesting the foul. And we have another new face, John Ray Alabanza. Actually, he was in earlier. He makes his re entry for the UE Red Warriors and also, obviously, even in a finals game, Coach Dito trying to get extended minutes for some of his rookies. That's Buenafe 
Lafayette was asking for that low post option against Paul Lee. It wasn't given to him. Kirk Long awkwardly puts it up. Baclau, offensive nice. rebound. Nice job of landing and quickly putting it up, even though he was still off balance and just off one foot. Arimiagas, Paul Lee. That's short. Kirk Long hauling down that one. Doesn't see Paul Lee behind him. Oh. Nobody warned him. Well, they were, but it was too noisy. <laughs> the old bench of Ateneo was shouting, behind! Not in the, not in college ball. Not with these drums. And he wasn't looking behind him either. Oh, yeah. Parillagas. Nothing there. And Alusani with his fifth rebound of the game. Oh, and Buena Fe with a dangerous pass. They recover. Eric Salama throws up to three. That short. 32-25, Paul Lee able to escape jail. And a three-second infraction called on the rookie Alabanza. And this is there by the inexperienced rookie Alabanza of staying in the paint a little too long. Coach Lili Pomaran applauding his boys' effort here in the second quarter. But still, I remember one thing that Riza was saying, they wanted to keep tabs of their fouls and their useless fouls. They have four fouls already so far in this quarter. Oh, five, actually. They're already at the penalty. And that's something that they obviously did not fix yet. Renefe sending it over to Kirk Long. Kirk against Paul Zamar. Go down to Raba. Down the basement with eight on the 24. The waiting double team by Pari. Great close by oh. Pari Diagas. That was Diagas who created that turnover, or forced it at least. And that was not good offensive spacing by Ateneo. Not giving Alusani an opportunity for an easy kick out in case he double came. Because Kirk Long was not just at the top of the key, he was actually near the, the parallel to the elbow line of the free throw line. It's a foul by Kirk Long. Fatty was just there lurking, he was waiting. Yeah. Pass went straight to him, actually. Under the weather today, Marcy Arellano checks back in as UE has the seven point lead. The name Zamar, DJ. As we see, Elias uh, Plana. That's his son? I'm asking. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, my, my eyes are. But the name Zamar, also. of course. Boise Zamar. Yes. Yeah. I believe that is. Yes. Former coach of uh, the UE Red Warriors. Kind of resembles him, too. I believe that is his son. Oh. Salama pushed away. Nakulangan. Marcy Arellano. Here comes Martinez. Sends it out to Zamar. Zamar drives, draws. Alabanza loses it. Here comes Eric and a takeaway by Martinez, but it will be a Teneo ball. Good tap to stop that fast break attempt with Teneo. against Marci Arellano. Ateneo bouncing back in terms of the rebounding here in the second quarter. DJ 12 to three. And Raba has five of those. Martinez short arm that one. Raba now with six rebounds. Ryan Buenefe has not been in his element today. He hasn't scored. A couple of turnovers, a couple of risky passes. He's not in his rhythm today so far. This rookie of Ateneo from San Sebastian High School. A kick out to Salamat. Top of the circle, no hesitation. Ryan Buenafe puts on it cue, down. On cue, just as uh, we mentioned, his uh, ineffectivity so far. Draining a triple there, showing his range up and his versatility as this guy can do it from inside and out. And uh, a little bit of confidence too. Yep. Five points for the rookie from San Sebastian. Patty puts it up and in. Yes. Wow. Showing us the touch. You know, the UE players really tried to extend their range even going back to last year. Uh -huh. You talk about Kelvin Gregorio, Canizares, Tiele, Elmer Espiritu, right. Borboran. And now Barry Llagas wants to join that, the fray of shooting from the outside. Comes Buenafe trying to work on Marcy. Separation given, but he doesn't get the conversion. 37-28 down to the 32nd mark of this first half. 13 on their 24, talking about UE. So it is official, that is Boise Sun. Okay. 
Batty from the corner this time. That's long. And Kurt comes away with it. Six seconds on the game clock. Eddick, Spinderella move, puts wow. it up and in over three. Nice. UE yeah. Red Warrior players. What a move. And that's what we talk about when it comes to Eric Salama. Awesome grit and determination to get that shot off. Not much of leaping ability involved there, just spinning around. James Martinez getting past Arellano. Oh, and just yes. enough. I know. He was just about wow. to hit the floor <laughs> as he kisses it off the window. That is Eric Salamat. So far in the game for Salamat. That's his first two points, surprisingly. Second quarter, a little bit better for Ateneo. They made that run, that 10-0 run, answered by Yui at 5-0, but they rebounded the ball better and shot a little bit better also in the second. So if Ateneo, if you're Coach Ronald Black, you'd be happier with the effort here in the second quarter. Just got to watch out for those turnovers because it causes situations like that. Easy fast breaks for the Red Warriors. 37-30 is what we're going to work with as we take this halftime break. Stay with us here on Studio 23 for more of the finals of the Nike Summer League 2008. From the field, from beyond the arc, as compared to Ateneo's 20%, they're one out of five pass break points. Interestingly, has gone the way of uh, Ateneo there, 10 to two. And uh, rebounds though also, Ateneo has had the edge in the second quarter, which helped them get this lead of 17 to 12. But the steals have gone the way of Yui, 9 to 2. Yui has shown a lot of aggressiveness in their full court press. Not only did they get the a lot of steals from the full court press, I'd say their full court press deserves an A rating because they've delayed the offense yes. of Ateneo, which is actually the primary purpose of a press. You just want to delay and disrupt a team's offensive execution. If you can get a steal, then that's the cherry It's a bonus, on the ice exactly. Cream. All right, also not in the in the numbers that were shown, a key factor, I, I believe. Bench points, 18 for UE, only five for Atenea, as there we saw. Uh, the leading scorers, Chris Chu and James Martinez, who really started off uh, this campaign today. And you're looking at Hans Tiele, who's had some good shots from the outside with six points. Rudy Lingana also coming off the bench to give some spark for the Red Warriors, as uh, you look at Alusani and R R Ryan Buenefe helping out Chris Chu there offensively. And so far, it is 37-30. Also some numbers before we get to the third quarter. Backcourt scoring for UE is 26 to 10 in favor of the UE Red Warriors. While front line, because of uh, Raba Luseni chipping in some points there, 20 to 11 in favor of Ateneo. Luseni so far, eight points, six rebounds, two blocks. On the other side, the partner of Elmer is really to Barry Lagas, three points and four rebounds. Elmer, of course, matched up against uh, Nono Baklao, celebrating a birthday today. That is the, well, foreseen matchup. It will be Yuri Escueta on James Martinez to start the third quarter here at the Phil Sports Arena. The slow rotation by Ateneo on that switch. What happened there? Nice cut to the basket by Elmer Espiritu. That's always a good habit of a player who realizes that his man has left him to help. You cut straight to the basket. Make yourself available for that easy pass and the easy basket. Obviously, Yui has developed into an excellent passing team. That play definitely works for them. Salamat, quick release. That is good. There you go. Nice setup there by Chris Chu. For Eric Salama coming off the screen, catch and shoot situation. Normally it's all the way around. You see Salama giving Chris Chu a catch and shoot situation. So the lead down the six of 39-33. It's a great setup job by Chris Chu. Esqueta finding Chu, who's up against Paul Lee. Chu again taking the pressure. Finding Salamat once again. Salamat out to Al Husseini. He likes that jumper, but he gave it up. Salamat, wow. five quick points for the former San Sebastian. Nice patience by Antonia there, although Al Husseini probably had a good look already from 15 feet, but he opted to look for something closer to the basket and found Salamat. 
eight feet away on the baseline. He has been struggling with the jumper, yeah. talking about Al Husseini, so probably that's one of the reasons. You know, those things that get to you yep. while you're playing the game. Some players don't care, some players think about it too much. Paul Lee able to get inside on the nice pick and roll play. You know, Paul Lee is a scary player for UE. He potentially has a breakout season for UE this year. We saw him in spurts last year. You know, some good games here and there, depending on the playing time that he would get. But this guy is such a deadly operator for UE. He can do a lot of things on the floor. He can play point guard. He can give out nice passes. We know he has a good outside shot. He can hit the big threes. And that, getting a, a nice steal there on this press. And he's a great finisher and on I the break. I was just about to say he is an incredible finisher. Yep. And I finally get my wish. Salamat against Paul Lee, former teammates go. in San Sebastian. They've had some good battles between them. You know, Ateneo is one of the few teams that really stayed with UE in last season's a campaign. You know, how UE blew out a lot of teams, 20, 30, 40 points. Ateneo was the one team that they didn't, weren't able to do that. Right. 43-35, UE has been able to put some distance between them and the Blue Eagles. The steal on the double team by Escueta and Eric Salamat, Coach Dito Pomaren in the face yep. of Paul Lee for that error. And speaking of UE, let's go down to Riza Diaz. Boom, Coach Dean Dupomaren wasn't very happy with the easy baskets the UE Warriors has been giving at today. Therefore, he reminded his boys that they would have to work harder on defense and pressure the backboard of the Blue Eagles. So offensively, ang sabi niya, hindi ko kayo tiniruan maging sa game. Therefore, I want to see good ball rotation from you guys. I want you to go hard, aggressive, and exploit Ateneo in the paint. Thank you very much. In the paint is where their disadvantage is. In the matchup against this team, Ateneo, Coach Norman Black very aggressive on the sidelines group, signaling he wanted an isolation there on the left side for Eric Salamat. He, I guess he really feels Salamat has an advantage against Paul Lee defensively. Your assessment, DJ, and I'll put you on the spot here on this one. Your assessment of Coach Norman Black and the time that he's taken over this this uh, team. Wow. <laughs> Talk about on the spot. Well, you know, Coach Norman, I can imagine any team any coach that goes to either Ateneo or La Salle, uh -huh. number one, has to deal with so much pressure, specifically from the Packers, the Boosters, alumni. the alumni, and then you have the parents. It's, it's, a, it's a totally different ball game from coaching in the pros where Coach Norman Black came from. And where he was multi titled One of the best, one of the best. Yes. Without a doubt, one of the best, one of the top five coaches the Philippines has ever seen. In, in the PBA, and he has yet to win a title in the UAP. But a lot of people are saying it's due to him. He had, he was so close to it the year before against USD, when when the lineup was great and it was really mature enough to win that title. But you know, it, it's different as the years go by. You you have to get used to transition of players graduating, rookies coming in, getting used to the system again. So I think though, Coach Raman has really uh, gotten a good hang of things at the college level. One thing that's different is that the support. I mean, he had to inherit a coaching staff of Ateneo yeah. that were the coaches of the juniors and uh, the assistant coach of the seniors. It's like, that's not easy to do, it's, yeah. coming in without your staff that you normally used to bring in. But also, it is uh, fair to mention that before he coached, he was a consultant the year before. Right, when so, Coach Sandy know. had his last year as head coach. And that was his way or his way of getting to know the system, the right. players, the school, right. and I guess the atmosphere of the college season was just incredible right. pressure. I, I don't think, shoulders. honestly, it's fair to judge the ability and the success of a coach just by the championships alone. Okay. Although, you can see the great ones with the championships on, on, under the belt, of course, and Franz Bomaran has really done so much with the many different teams that he's handled, and through the years, the system has really worked. By the way, it's a little development here for UE. Paul Lee already with four personal fouls on the offensive foul earlier. Coach Dito Kamara again, livid at him for that one. Chris Chu beating him to the spot earlier. And again, UE with very early penalty here. Yes. 6.50 to go in the third, and they're in the penalty. And the lead is only five, and a traveling attraction called on Martinez as he's trying to get into the rhythm of that shot. So another... Uh, 
mini spurt here for Ateneo who has had a problem breaking the press. They yep. have given the ball and turned the ball over a myriad of times. It's Baclao obviously under the weather is just not as active yeah. as usual. Chris Chu though setting nice up setup. Raba al -Husseini. Beautiful setup. He could have given it to him probably a half second earlier, but he took one more step to make sure Yakas would commit to him at the baseline, which gave al -Husseini the easy layup. Excellent point. Martinez against Escueta, trapped underneath. Samar, and another foul called before the shot was taken. And it will be on Brian Buenafe. Second personal for the rookie. Gino Etrone now coming in for Paul Samar. We're taking a break here at the 6.13 mark. Ateneo breathing down the necks as we see the drive and dish capability of Chris Yu to Raba Al Husseini, who's so far in the ballgame. 10 points, 6 rebounds. The lead is 3. We'll be back. One of the players that we uh, talked about earlier that they'll miss for this season, very versatile forward, Mark Borboran for the UE Red Warriors, here to support his former team at the Phil Sports Arena. Again, we are live. Mark Barocca, member of the mythical selection. Boy, this guy. Last year we talked about him as the new Denok Miranda for FEU. So much pressure on his shoulders. He has one year tucked under the belt, and now he's going to carry a very athletic, light, long team who wants to get back into the final four contention. A proud tradition of winning yep. for FEU. Reyes wild on that play. Yuri Escueta down to Ryan Buenafe. Husseini Oops. had the shot, yep. gave it up, but possession stays with them with nine on their 24. The lead is still three for the Red Shirts. And yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how Ryan Buenafe develops in his first year when he's got a lot of defensive mismatches. Because he can play exactly. big. He can play big. You can put him at two, you can put him at one, and he will have those mismatches defensively. You post him up as what Coach Norman just did in that last play. And he's a great passer. So you can see the ability of this guy to really make those mismatches and find his teammates in good scoring position. He did a lot of that in San Sebastian going to, for that title last year's NCAA. Oh, Genius what a drive by Raba. That is a drive with purpose. He wasn't, he, he knew what he was going to do from yep. the get go. And that's what, again, we've been wanting to see as Hans Tielli commits his fourth personal foul. Let's go to Vanna Lim quickly for Ateneo. Vanna? There was one main message in the huddle, and that message was to follow instructions. Check in with the bench and communicate with your teammates. Coach Jamaike also told his boys, he encouraged them, you have to show more energy and you have to show them your emotions. Put your heart into it because this is not just a game, it's a championship. All yours, Boom. And that's what we were talking about earlier, me and DJ, at the, in the first quarter. How much does Ateneo yep. want to win this one? And Coach Norman Black has been, you know, you saw him on the seat earlier. He's a, That's the five seconds that you will see him use his chair because <laughs> he's been really up and about. Coach Jamaik Perin, of course, is assistant coach. You also saw team manager Paulo Trillo, but there's Toto Bandai again putting a little distance between them and the pretenders to the crowd. 46-41 is our score. Yuri from the corner, off the back iron. And Yui will slow this down. No, they up to run. Yagas in the middle, and he nice knows what throw. to do when he's there. Nice look there by Rui Dinegana. It's not an easy pass to make, but soft little dump pass inside to the big man who's running, looking back to you. But he made that look so easy. Yuri rattles that one in. And, you know, that was another 5-0 run by Yui just earlier. Ryan looking to take the ball away to set up the body, and that's what I'm talking about. Players beating other players to the spot. And another offensive foul call. Assistant coach Bong Ravenna disappointed. Tinuru pa yung ulo. Alam na natin ko na ibig sabihin. It's a three-on-one break. You don't barge into the one and only defender to try to salvage that uh, defensive stand for the nail. Decision making yep. is a process also for a lot of the rookies. 
And sophomores. Ryan thought about it. Find Salamat, who trained the three earlier. That's long. And Elmer Espiritu coming away with his third rebound of the game. Rudy Lingana down to Parillagas. Approaching the four minute mark. Four minutes and some change here in the third. Elmer Espiritu against Baclao. That's a good matchup. He got beat. That was a good job initially by. Baclao not biting on the fake. And then he stayed with him, but a little too much body there. As uh, Spirit to find it, he went for that scoop shot. Knows already how to invite contact. Elmer Spirito, also one of those players we are looking out for in th this year's UAP campaign with Gregorio Bar uh, Borboran and uh, Canizares out. He will anchor. The bigs, Marciano on your screens, as we said, under the weather. Looks like it, too. <laughs> Number one out of two with that trip. Michael Baldos makes his re-entry. As Nonay Baklao, who is also under the weather, steps out. Celebrating, no, sorry, he's celebrating a birthday and uh, nursing an ankle injury. He's talking about Nonay Baklao. Under four minutes to play in the third quarter of the finals. The Nike Summer League 2008, fourth straight year of the NSL. Six on the 24. I don't know if Baldos realizes it. He gets it up to Raba, oh. rejected by Elmer Espiritu. You have got to go up stronger. Oh yeah. When you've got Elmer there, who never gives up on a play. Or be wary and use your fakes properly. Toto, he likes that screen. Petrone sends it out, and they reset the table. Coach Dindo calling the thumbs down play. Let's see how this evolves as we come up the three minute part of the third quarter. Gane from 15, knocks it down. He has shot well in this game. He's got seven points already. And he's got some big shots over the outstretched arms of his defenders smacking their faces. My bad, eight points for Rudy Legane and just when Ateneo, time and time again, has come closer to the 2006 champions. They have put some space between themselves. 51, 43, we'll be back in a jiffy. Well, the scouting continues even uh, as they have played their last game, talking about La Salle, Tyrone Bautista, Benici Turi was uh, part of the coaching staff of the De La Salle Green Archers who fell to the FEU Tamaraos yep. earlier here at the Phil Sports Arena for the battle for third. 51-43, under three minutes to play. Baco Nostria is back in the ball game for Ateneo. Baldos loses it. Look at that interior wow. defense. But still, you know, they, they've been very aggressive and intense. I think they've been fouling too much. They really piled up the fouls here all throughout the game. They got into the penalty with 6.50 to go in the third quarter. As you mentioned, there will be free throws as Raba Alusseni pick up the pieces. Got hit in the face. And you're a big man. That's going to happen every now and then. Yep. What gives here? So free throws will be given to Raba, who's still trying to see if his eye is in the socket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he is the half brother yep. of Carlos, Carlos Sharma, Sharma, right? He played for La Salle four years ago. Yep. Doing well now in the pros. Interesting to note how the different, and a different style. Yeah, yeah a different a different, different style. Carlos Sharma was a very aggressive and enforcer. Player. Yeah, had a lot of uh, you know scuffles with mm -hmm. guys like Enrico Villanueva uh -huh. and Rich Alvarez even, who may eventually became teammates with. <laughs> I know at some point of his career. Backman is on Rudy Lingana. Gino Entrone, Elmer Espiritu, Toto Bandai, and Parillagas, the five on the floor for the Red Warriors. That's an offensive foul. 
I love it when they say wala. Yeah. <laughs> Although kita kita, so much sincerity. Wala. <laughs> Fourth personal on Fransmir Koto Bandai. Fifty-one forty-five, two and fifteen remaining in this third quarter. On the winner take all championship match between Ateneo and UE. Chris to Ryan, looking for another three. Rims out. Barin Viagas has been a monster off the board. Six rebounds for him. They go down to Patty, who has got an in-between game, but he overcooks that one. Chris Chu ahead to Baco, and Michael Baldos is on nice the other pass. side. And it, again, Elmer Espiritu was there, but he will always go for that, though. No matter what happens, as long as that ball is in, he is within his uh, no-fly zone, and he's going to fly and swat that. He's going to exactly. Right? The nice pass there on the break by Baco in Austria. The lead pass coming from Chris Chu. The lead back down to four again. Ateneon again making another run. And just as I say that, Gino Entrone with a rainmaker. Yui has executed so well on their screens. Who coming off the screens, catch and shoot situations. Raba improving his position, but just could not finish. So it's back to a six point lead with 66 seconds remaining in the penultimate quarter. And a foul given up by Bakun Austria. First personal on the sophomore. He is sophomore, right? Bakun. Yep. yep. Raba getting the applause from the Ateneo faithfuls who are here on a Father's Day Sunday. Good account of himself so far. Paul Samar, hesitation move. Gives it up to Elmer. Elmer with the thing. Sama for three. And a great tap by Gino Entrone. He has been so active today with the limited minutes he's got in Entrone. He's been all over the floor. Coach Lindo Bomare. Let's see if Yui's going to go for some sort of a two for one situation here with 37 seconds remaining. Espiritu putting up the three. That's short. Buenafe with the rebound. Sends it over to Bakon. Bakon again has. Baldos with him. Baldos thinking about going to the reverse. Doesn't get the trickle. He yeah, made the right decision there. Going reverse, making, making the rim as a Protector. protective shield against the shot blocking ability of Elmer Espiritu. Ateneo Bench signaling that they have a foul to give with seven on our game clock. And Ryan gives it up as Rudy Ligana executes a crossover. You ask how bad the Ateneo wants to win this? Luis, <laughs> Luis Gonzaga, <laughs> another looking, rookie. They're looking really intense now. Yeah, from the juniors, Blue Eaglets. Now coming in for Chris Chu. They don't want Chris Chu giving up unnecessary fouls. And also giving the fifth year veteran extra rest on the bench. Kirk Long also set to come in. To replace Ryan Buenafe. On this final defensive sequence, 4.9 seconds remaining in the third. See how this play develops. Almost a steal. They recover. A three by Martinez and a chance. And that will do it. And after the three quarters played here in the championship game, on the Nike Summer League, UE able to stymie every single Ateneo rally. 53. 47, your general assessment well, of the they've, third. They've, they've, they're doing their part and crawling their way back, but UE time and again, as you said, it's time with the runs of Ateneo, but I think it's really gonna boil down to the defensive stops of Ateneo. UE has been executing so well in different aspects, hitting the three-pointers, executing their soft breaks, their fast breaks there, and even their pick and rolls and catch and shoot situations. UE is on the ball right now. Ateneo's gotta pick up their game in the fourth quarter. Who will get that? Snag that trophy. We have one more quarter to decide the champions for the Nike Summer League. For the finals of the 2008 Nike Summer League. Boom Gonzalez, DJ Manoto for you. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Yes, it is the finals between Ateneo and UE. Score so far is 53-47.
And the first appearance of another rookie for Ateneo at the start of the fourth quarter, DJ. Justin Chua actually came in towards the oh, end. Okay. And, uh, he took out Al Husseini in the last, I think, 50 seconds of the third quarter. But yeah, he's been seeing some good action in this yeah. whole Nike Summer League. Yes. Showing some pretty good uh, poise as a rookie, averaging like, eight points a ball game. So he's in against Barry Yagas, the veteran of UE. Marco Nostria, inside to Baclao, nice pretty ball. play. Marco Nostria, that's what he brings to Ateneo. The court vision and the ability to make good passes like that. Because in the juniors, he did play the three and four right. position. So he has experience backing down on guards. And getting double team, exactly. and finding open teammates. Just like Ryan Buenafe, who's also in the floor. The lead pass to Chua may not be a good idea. Elmer Espiritu from 16. Yui recovering. Lead is down to four. A lot of pushing and shoving going on underneath. And the refs are letting them play. Yep. There's the finals. Seven on the 24. Samar kicking it out. Espiritu trying to spin. That's a tough angle, wow. but he puts it down. With one second to go on the shot clock. Great defense by Ateneo for 23 seconds. Yep. But, I mean, there's nothing much you can do with a shot like that. Second consecutive turnover here by just careless passing e on Ateneo. Exactly. No ball fake at all. Just throwing it straight to the hands of UE defenders. And you just don't do it to teams like UE. No, not at all. Not with the way they play defense. Yeah, exactly. And the length of their players, those arms that they have, again, somewhat aggressive inside, puts wow. it in. Look at that. I like the, the, the way this guy plays. Well, all alone was Chua, but an errant pass by Ryan Buenafe and Ateneo with some careless mistakes yep. to kick off this fourth quarter. So three straight turnovers here for Ateneo. The lead back up to eight just like that. Buenafe takes his seat at the bench. So does Justin Chua. So does Bakun Austria. And Eric Salamat, Yuri Escueta, and Raba Alduseni come in. Whoop, what was That's that? That's an offensive foul. <laughs> No need for that. Especially when you're up yeah. eight. When you're in the midst of a run. Chris Chu. 8.07 to play, second personal on Gino. Also, Lucas Tagarda, one of the rookies for UE in the ball game against Chris Chu. They are trying to figure out now how to cut into this lead and snatch it from UE. They have one more quarter and eight more minutes to play. To try to take the Nike Summer League title. Chris Chu from the corner. He likes that. There you go. He has won a few ball games from that corner. He loves that spot. There are some players who really prefer when they do a catch and shoot situation, they want to catch it on a particular side. Chris Chu seems to like catching it on his right side. Against LaSalle, he shot three out of six from beyond the arc. And today, he cuts that lead to five with that triple. Fatty fades away, oh. and he still is able to get that to go down. And the reason why Barry Nagas got that open look is because of the effectiveness of uh, Lingana in this game. He's got some good shots against his defenders. al came over to help from the pick and roll. Good look opened up. For Look at that defense now with 10 seconds. Ateneo is just about to yep. settle into their offense. That's a great job of this press to deny the early execution. Chris Chu claimed he was hit. Nothing there. The lead is seven with seven minutes to play in this fourth quarter. UE time and time again able to put distance between them and the Blue Eagles. And thrown his third for another Rainmaker. Wow. The looping along two. Oh, these guys are on point offensively and defensively. Yep. They look really sharp. They are on the ball, they are really sharp. Executing great, shooting great, defending well. I can't find any flaws in Yui now except for some a little too fouling too much actually. Yuri settles for the three. And now that's what Ateneo is doing. They're settling for shots uh -huh. in their last three possessions. Well, they end up panicking because the press delays them so much. They don't have much time to set up their offense. The lead back up to nine. And 
And that's a foul from Eric Salamat as we go to Riza Diaz from the leading UE Red Warriors. Boom coach Dindo Pumarin said Ateneo's offense strategies could be very tricky. Therefore, we would have to outsmart them. Let's play clean and tough defense against the Blue Eagles. He also said that this lead that we have isn't any comfy couch. So therefore, we would have to continue working harder for the last remaining minutes of this ball game and hopefully bag a win out of this. Boom. Unfortunately, they turn the ball over here as Yuri will challenge Elmer Espiritu. And that's how you go up against a shot blocker. Yeah. You really go into his body and you use your body to defend him from the shot block. He jumped into the yep. shot blocker as they say, 61-54. And Trone maneuvers out of trouble. Lingane with a confident jumper, nothing there. And a tap going to Elmer Espiritu. Raba unable to block out. You know, the versatile play of Entrone at the small forward position, I think pretty much fills the void of losing Joel Canizares, the way that Canizares would play. For you. That's a traveling violation by Tagarta. Tagarta, rather. Seven point lead. Buenafe comes back in. Escueta moves back out. James Martinez also makes his re entry for this ball game together with Paul Lee and Paul Samar. A slow, I mean, small and scrappy UE team right now. But change that as Hans Tiele comes in. Or Pariliaga. So Espiritu and Kele will anchor the bigs. And you have Lee, Samar, and Martinez, the small. You know, for the UE, with the way Paul Lee, Liag, Liganai, Liagas, and uh, who's the other, Pantai, improving the last couple of years, they've really added to the depth of UE. You know? uh -huh. The way they can have another solid five come back on the floor. Right? And Buenafe gave up the layup. The layup. And Raba going for the three-point play opportunity. We're seeing a marked improvement with this 6-6 six -six center for the Ateneo Blue Eagles, Raba Al Husseini, so far in this game. 13 points, make that 15 points and nine rebounds, DJ. Wow. Together with a couple of blocks to his credit. And considering that's a slow start. For Rabbi because it was a lousy first quarter for Ateneo. He is four out of five from the line after that free throw. And this is the closest that Ateneo wow. has been with UE. 61-60. Ateneo stays within slipstream. Oh, sorry. 61-59. They just changed it. Now they change it back to 61-57. to Before I confuse everybody else, let's take a break. <laughs> Back here in the Phil Sports Arena with under five minutes to play. The uh, score officially now is 61-57. Let's look at the uh, sequence earlier on. The big fight. rebound. Tell me that didn't look like a Tim Duncan. Kukuha <laughs> 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 foul. I know yep, yep, Tim Duncan yep, yep. foul. Yep. Father Vic Uy, Executive Director of the Phil Sports Commission with us, of course, Mr. Danny Gonzalez, Tournament Director for the Nike Summer League, passionately explaining something to him. But going back to that, Tim, you know how Tim Duncan always does that? He and plays. He'll tap the ball to himself yes, to get a then, rebound, yeah. and then he'll flail his right, right arms, arms and yeah. then put up a shot. 61-57. Yeah. not saying he plays like him, but... Reminds us of him at time to time. Flashes yep. with that height, uh, the the stands. A lull here in the game as Coach Dito Pomarin asking about something. It is a 61-57 count. Is there one more rally left for the Ateneo Blue Eagles? That's the question here with under five to play. They've had at least four or five mini spurts in the last three quarters, is there one more in the bag for Ateneo to try to overhaul this lead? And UE has been successful as Martinez is short and again out rebounded in that sequence with Ateneo. So they reset. 14 on their 24. Martinez finds Zamar. 
Oh, Chris Jew taking it away. Chris Jew has James Martinez, shifts his direction, puts it oh. up, and it rims out. Good idea of breaking it in the paint, sidestepping towards the paint rather than going baseline. Ateneo again with another charge here, and we go to Vanna Lim for this one. Vanna? Although still trailing, the Eagles remain undaunted. As Coach Norman told the boys, now is the time to be aggressive offensively. Capitalize on UE's foul trouble. Another problem Coach Norman noted is that the boys are holding on to the ball too long. Find the open man and pass it down. Big man Rabba Alustaini also added, Contina Longyar. We're still in this ball game, Gaya Laban Ba. Well, definitely, Vanna. 61 57, 416. Chris Chu missing his first free throw. He is now three. Ooh. Out of five, all of a sudden, missing both on that trip. And uh, Ateneo, actually, from the free throw line, 16 out of 20. Yui only shooting four free throws here in this game and making three. Only four? The only whole four. Game? Three out of wow. four. Surprising stat. Nice tap there by Alessandri. Three seconds on the shot clock. This is going to hurt for Ateneo. But they were able to block out and secure the rebound. Lead is four, 3.45 remaining in the fourth and final quarter. Finals of the Nike Summer League 2008. Chris Chu for three, that's short. Baklao unable to tap it to himself, and Yele tracks it down. Ateneo's had, I think, three or four of those just in and out shots, either from three-point range or from the layup. Martinez will try, that's and big. he gets it to go. He's done that before. He's done that at the start of this yep. game, and he's looking to close out this game, too. He has done that before. Timely sniping by James Martinez. 11 points, three triples for James. Austria drives, push it up high off the glass. And Abba fighting wow. for that one. Look at that. Very active on the boards. A possessed Rabba Alusaini today. 10 rebounds, 18 points for Rabba. The kid is starting to grow up, TJ. <laughs> Not literally, yep. but at least basketball-wise. The lead is five. Six on the 24. Martinez thought about it. He that traveled that time. Good close by Chris Chu. Good defensive stop there for Ateneo. Still down by five. A lot of time to go here. 2.36 to go. Five-point lead. Coach Norman wants to make sure of this possession, DJ. Why not? Yep. They call this timeout. We'll be back with more of the Nike Summer League Championship game. James Martinez, three triples. That was a big one for the five-point lead at 64-59. The three-point shooting for both teams both Ateneo and the UE have put up 16 triples attempts. UE has made seven, Ateneo has made three. Made Chupa, Tony Ataide, Nike Philippines on hand, of course, for the awarding of the champions for the 2008 Nike Summer League. Martinez, um, with three out of five from beyond the arc. Wow. Another big shooting day for him from three-point territory. And he really knows how to pick his shots when it's badly needed. That's when they convert. That's when he converts. Uh, final push here for the Blue Eagles. The UE trying to regain a championship that they lost last year to the De La Salle Green Archers. They lost in the semifinals, actually, uh -huh. for the Green Archers. And then Oops. La Salle. Winning over FEU in the finals last year. Hans Diele thought Chris Chu had the last tap of that one. The ref wasn't actually very sure. He wanted to look at his other referees on the floor to get some advice. Four of the shot clock. I think Diele got the piece of that. Buena wow. fair just in the nick of time. Cuts it down to a one possession ball game. And one second to go in the shot clock there. Ryan Buena fair bailing the Eagles out. Now the experience of UE will be key in this uh, in this stretch, in this windup. And that's an experienced lineup that Coach Dino Pomarin has on the floor right now. He's taken out Etrone, Samar, and yep. all the other rookies. Espiritu oh, follows his that. own miss, wow. and a foul is called. Wow. And he had a double team on him. He took the shot. It 
missed, he was the first one to get up in the air to go for that offensive rebound. There was nobody better in terms of doing that than Arwin Santos back yep. in the day when he was playing in the UAP. And now, Following his shot. Elmer Espiritu climbing the ladder wow. for that one. That's not an easy second jump, but the guy's got hops. Fresh shot clock to work with for UE. Baklao on Elmer. They're looking for a cutter. Oh, what? pinballed off. And Stiele, a traveling infraction, will be called on back on Austria. So it actually backfires in Ateneo because the shot clock will be reset. Exactly. Because considering Bakun had possession, and then he traveled, okay. right? Because he was okay. on the floor. Okay. And then his feet were not in contact with the floor after a while. So talk about a bailout play for Yui, getting a fresh shot clock now with a minute and 34 to go. We're live here at the Phil Sports Arena. Arabia CBN Sports, Boom Gonzalez, TJ Monotok, the windup of the final game of the Nike Summer League 2008. Kirk Long and the rest of Ateneo looking for a preseason championship leading up to the UAP, which starts July 5, and a block by Nonoy Baklao on Paul Lee, but UE still with possession. And Ateneo disagrees. 20-second shot clock. 20 Liagas will march out, go back to the bench. A minute and 29. One possession, separating these two teams. Three points. Mingana crossing over from the elbow. Gele climbing the back of Raba Al Husayni, and a jump wow. is called. Looks like a lot of contact from behind from Hans Gele. No call on the potential over the back foul. But nonetheless, Rabbi didn't do his job of boxing out Gele anyways. He just went in a jumping competition for that rebound. So the possession arrow pointing to the red shirts. This is, what, their third possession? Yeah, another fresh 24 second shot clock here. Minute 20. Time and score on your screens. Piele, down the basement. Fades away, Raba on him all throughout that shot. So whatever it's worth, in those last two possessions of <laughs> UE, Ateneo's blocked the shots. Uh -huh. Donny just... Baklao first. Uh -huh. The Ateneo crowd now on their feet. This will boil down to Ooh. execution. I thought that was going to be free throws, but this is the only quarter that UE it's has not, not got it in early penalty. That's only their fourth team foul. So we are now down to under a minute. Second personal foul on Nganai, who moves out for Gino Etrone now. Played well for Yui all throughout this game. He's there for defensive purposes. They don't want Ryan Buenafe able to boast a smaller uh -huh. Rudy Nganai. Exactly. Ryan thought about the three. Drives aggressively. Left-handed oh, wow. shot. Wow. What a shift <laughs> by the rookie and a confident move. What a tough Confident drive there in with the, the left hand in the face of Elmer Spiritu. In that sequence, too. Now that's definitely a foul. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can withstand the pressure on the free throw line, though. But that was a nice, quick drive for Ateneo. Now the ball will go back to Yui, no matter what happens here in, this, in these free throws. And they'll still have the last possession, if ever. The so ability, good, good clock management there. The ability to take the contact. And I, I said many many times that this guy comes on the floor you see it in his face that he's confident yep. he's got a little bit of swagger going mm -hmm. three out of three from the line so far and if now it's down a two-point lead and he coolly sinks in two free throws in the clutch a much celebrated rookie from san sebastian able to put it in to cut the lead down to 152.4 Remaining UE possession now, DJ, and the last three sequences weren't pretty for the Red Shirts. It was ugly for UE in the last minute and a half here of this game. They have not executed well. Let's listen in to Coach Steve Dubomare. Pero pag nagman, labas mo hands, hands, five tayo, five. Punin natin bola, pag batik dito, ah, ah, atake tayo, ah, two ways tayo, two ways, two ways. Side knee, side knee, two ways. Timing a screen, timing a screen, huh? Wala nang extra, huh? Hey, hey, if ever, listen, mga score sila. All pick and roll, huh? Pag kay shoot tayo, we've got jumping right away, 15, 
13 tayo. Hey, for the pick and roll, listen. The pick and roll si Buena Pe. Ha? I-switch natin. Hey, switch natin. Ha? Malaki naman yun. Hey, guys, si Buena Pe, switch natin, pari. Naitindihan natin. Hey, guys. Ha? Blackout tayo. Blackout. Ha? How many offensive rebound na lang ang kuha sa atin? Let's go. Hey, hey. Fifty-two point four seconds remaining. Let's do a little bit of math here. Oh, we, you see the time and the score. Penalty for UE. Ateneo has three more fouls to give. They that's have a lot. They have a timeout to call. UE has none. Actually, I'd say that's Ateneo's got two team fouls. They have two fouls to okay, give. Okay, they're Shoot on the fifth. Yes, but yes, still, that's that's a, that's a lot. So the situation. The last time Ateneo led was six and five with six thirty-five in the first quarter. It is UE possession, and Ateneo's got a couple of fouls to give. 10 on the 24. Paul Lee, a turnover Ooh. for the Red Shirts, 35.8. Ateneo with one timeout, and Coach Norman Black will call it. He'll call it. 64, 63, and as I mentioned earlier, now Ateneo has not led in this game since the start, or since the 6.35 mark of the first quarter. Let's listen to Coach Sherman Black. A proud father, also back in Austria, who has seen extended minutes here. Yeah, in the in crucial minutes yeah. of the game in the fourth quarter, he's been playing very good defense on Lingana. Even though I'd say honestly, physically he looks slower than Lingana, but his height has been a factor. Six turnovers for you in the fourth. That one was the crucial one. Chris Chu guarded by Tagarta, the rookie. Let's see. They go to Chris Chu, stop and pop, and he puts yes. it in. That nice assist pass, perfectly coming from back on Austria. And this is why I mentioned, TJ, that Chris Chu was guarded by a rookie, Tagarda. Coach Dindo put a rookie on him. In a situation like this, you know Chris Chu is gonna get the ball. And he confidently put a rookie against him. And that was not an easy shot Not at all, not at all. And the big man was there, flashing out. And it's the first time that Ateneo has led in this game since 6.35. In the first quarter, 10 on the 24. A, a differential of two seconds on the game oh, clock. But that's the good. shot clock, and they're not in penalty. That's a good foul to give. Perfect time to give it when, uh, when UE is making a drive to the basket. But back on Austria has been huge in this game. Look at this nice pass. Perfect execution there with the screen, and the rookie was lost. Was in lost. The shuffle. And Chris Chu just has a nice smile for his fans. I mean, time and time again, DJ. Mm -hmm. 8.3, but UE has possession. Remember, Ateneo has one more foul. One more foul to give. Will this be a heartbreak of a possession for Ateneo? They go straight to Bani. Inside to Hans oh. Dele. And the, you, the ball will remain with UE with 3.4 seconds remaining. Dele had the shot. Yes. But since... Rabbi couldn't control the rebound. 3.4 seconds to go. Ateneo still has that last foul and, to give. And the coaching staff yeah. is screaming yep. for them to give one because that almost cost them. Yeah, they should have fouled Yagas actually at the post. We had this back in the basket. They got lucky in that play. Let's see. Yele and Nonoy 
right away fouls Maybe him. too early. Maybe too early. If you ask me, he didn't even make one dribble to the basket. And that's Tiele. He's not going to shoot from three-point line anyways. But now they have no more foul to give. Yep. This is just one defensive stance. They are one defensive stance from a championship while UE... And now you can take a literal. Defense wins championships. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it will take for Ateneo now. And it will boil down to one last shot for UE for them to regain the championship that they lost last year. Paul Lee from 16. Wow. And Ateneo wins the 2008 Nike Summer League Championship in the first title in Ateneo for Coach Norman Black. At the end of the game, On a Chris Chu pick Red and Morgan. pop situation, and TJ. What a play drawn out Ateneo twice Blue. right by Norman Black. And the Coach confidence Mike. he had in Bakun Austria, who Making didn't play much last year. Didn't play that much also this year, but got extended minutes stay because of his defensive advantage playing against Ninganai and his steadiness on the floor, giving out those nice passes, gave out the nice assist pass to Chris Chu. Timely coming off that screen. You know, that pass is not easy because if you give that at the wrong time, if it's behind, if it's too low, yes. it's bad for a rhythm shooter, which Chris Chu is. Chris Chu is a rhythm shooter. If that pass is off, just a little off from his chest where his sweet spot is. This is a, this is the last play. And the double team. We had the look. Yep. He had a good look at it. That was a Paul good Lee setup there. With way him. short on that one. And he had the time to shoot it. It was a nice setup there. But also give credit to the little screen, the little bump by Nonoy Baklao and the rookie Tagarda yep. to free up there. That's the screen. And Chris Chu reigns and drains for the winning shot and the championship of the Nike Summer League 2008. And interestingly, UE has been playing great defense all game long, but they just did not execute defensively exactly. in that last play, even if the screen was it. Granted, it's not even a rookie.